Hello, my name is Pam Sherratt and I'm a turfgrass specialist at the Ohio State University. This is the turfgrass science team at OSU, comprising of faculty, staff and graduate students. Upon graduation, our undergraduate students go on to work as golf course superintendents, athletic field managers, sod producers, lawn and landscape company owners, teachers and industry support personnel. Our aim is to teach them how to become good stewards of the landscape environment. In addition to teaching, there is a research facility and a strong outreach education program at OSU. Many land-grant universities across the US have programs similar to this and there is strong industry support. This audio slideshow has been put together by the team at OSU to give the listener a greater understanding of the turf grass industry and how it benefits us all. Turf is a ground cover composed of close-cut, thickly growing, intertwining stems and leaves of grass plants. A key part of turf grasses is that they are mowed. The fact that turf can withstand close mowing and still provide a functional, dense and healthy ground cover is what sets it apart from other plants. The turf grass industry in the US is valued somewhere between 40 and 60 billion dollars with over 50 million acres of turf. In Ohio alone, according to a 2007 survey, the turf grass industry accounts for 4.6 billion dollars in total economic impact with 42,000 people employed in the industry and over 4 million acres of turf grown in the state. Here is a breakdown of some of the 2007 results. There are 3 million homes in Ohio accounting for 2.3 million acres of turf. 3,000 lawn care companies look after 1 million acres of turf. There are 220,000 acres between municipalities and school districts. There are over 700 golf courses. $3 billion each year is spent on turf grass in the state of Ohio. Homeowners and golf courses spend the most of that money. There are also 42,000 people employed in the state in turf. 18,000 of those people work on golf courses and the rest work on municipalities and lawn care companies, etc. Turf systems are unique in that they play three important roles in society, which we will look at more closely. Firstly, turf plays a role in the natural environment. Turf grasses, like all plants, capture atmospheric carbon dioxide and use it via photosynthesis to create usable energy in the forms of sugars and carbohydrates. With increasing levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide associated with the greenhouse effect and global warming, turf grasses serve as a source of carbon storage or sequestration. Most of the turf volume, mass or biomass, is below ground. Given the perennial nature of turf, the storage of carbon in root mass and organic matter development in the soil, turf is a significant carbon sink. An average sized healthy lawn is a carbon sequestering system that can capture as much as 300 pounds of carbon per year. Research has also concluded that carbon storage in turf is comparable to the rate of carbon storage in land placed in the Conservation Reserve Programme. Lawns can capture up to 300 pounds of carbon per year. Athletic fields around 700 pounds of carbon and a fairway could capture 1,500 pounds of carbon. A practical example of carbon sequestration is that one soccer field can offset the carbon produced by a car driving 3,000 miles. Although positive carbon sequestration does occur in a turf system, some of the benefit is reduced by maintenance practices that require fossil fuels such as mowing and the production of fertilizers. Nevertheless, research over the last few years has concluded that practices like mowing, returning clippings, feeding and watering actually increases the lawn's ability to sequester carbon. Basically, the healthier the lawn, the more carbon it can store. Turf grasses also play an important role in soil erosion and dust control by holding the soil in place. The fibrous root systems in turf form excellent netting that reduces dust and stabilizes soil on flat and sloping areas. Healthy turf has the ability to absorb and conserve water, filter water and prevent runoff, which is why turf is used on a lot of slopes, roadsides and around parking lots. As we see in this table, perennial turf system has minimal runoff. Runoff and erosion of soil is considered to be the num one of the number one causes of nutrient contamination in our water systems. Reducing stormwater runoff from impervious surfaces is a relatively new concept in landscape design, with rain gardens being developed in some residential neighbourhoods. Some researchers are also recommending designing turf areas to serve as catchments and filtration zones for polluted runoff water. 
Turf systems are not only efficient at catching and filtering water, but are also very efficient at holding on to nutrients. Nutrients like phosphorus are fixed onto soil particles or taken up by the plant, and they do not leach out readily. The only way for phosphorus and other fertiliser nutrients to leave turf is by one of the means depicted here. Number one, if the fertiliser is applied to a hard surface like a driveway and not swept up. Two, if the fertiliser is applied to bare soil or frozen soil, it could be washed away with rain. And three, if the grass clippings are removed or swept into the road. The bottom line is that fertilisers applied to a healthy lawn are held in the soil and utilised by the turf plants. Turf areas like golf courses and parks also benefit wildlife. The natural state of these landscapes, coupled with the addition of trees, ponds, lakes and wetlands, support a diverse population of birds, animals and plants. As communities grow from a village to a town to a city, an increase in temperature occurs. In major cities the term urban heat island is used to characterise the temperature increase. On warm summer days the temperature can be 10 degrees Fahrenheit greater in an urban area compared to the surrounding area. A 5,000 square foot Kentucky bluegrass lawn contains 9 million plant shoots, while an average creeping bentgrass putting green contains 72 million individual shoots. Each of these plant shoots carries a cooling process called transpiration. Transpiration helps reduce temperatures in the urban environment by dissipating high levels of radiation. To that end, turf is considerably cooler than most other common surfaces. As shown in this table from research at Brigham Young University, turf can be 20 degrees cooler than burr dirt and 40 degrees cooler than synthetic turf. Transpirational cooling is dependent on an adequate supply of water. In turf areas, water is provided by rainfall and sometimes supplemented by irrigation, depending on length of the growing season, temperature, evapotranspiration rates, soil type, turf species and management practices. It is estimated that turf, including residential and commercial lawns, golf courses, etc., is the largest single irrigated crop in the United States. While residential landscapes are typically watered with municipal sources, golf course irrigation water comes primarily from on-site ponds, lakes, wells and streams. Only 9.5% of golf courses use public water exclusively. Ohio is fortunate to have water as an important natural resource. Bordered by Lake Erie to the north and the Ohio River to the south, and adequate rainfall during the growing season, water availability and shortages are not as critical in Ohio as other places in the United States. Regardless of location though, if supplemental irrigation is needed, there are many university bulletins and fact sheets that can be used as a guide. There are standard guidelines on irrigation timing, amount and frequency to make sure that water is used sparingly. In addition to environmental benefits, turf is used extensively for recreation and sport. Lawns and other recreational areas are places where adults, kids and pets can spend time outside of the home. Turf is used for play, for places to relax and for entertaining friends. This all contributes to the quality of one's life. With over 34,000 acres of athletic field turf and more than 700 golf courses in Ohio, sports are important not just to the economy but also to people's health and well-being. Per the US Census, there are 267 million people in the United States at 7 years of age and older. Of those 267 million people, around 80 million people play sports on turf. In the top 5 sports played on turf, it is estimated that golf courses have the most activity, at 25.6 million, and baseball and soccer have around 15 million regular participants. The importance of encouraging people to play sports and offering them places to play those sports cannot be downplayed, particularly when the Centre for Disease Control estimates that 17% of American children and adolescents are obese. Also, and just as important, it is an outlet for children and adults to spend their leisure time in a positive and safe environment. The third and last role that turf plays in society is in the aesthetic value in landscape situations. Turf grasses help provide a pleasing urban environment through noise abatement, glare reduction, fire protection and pest reduction. Studies looking at landscaping and house values have found that there is a positive relationship between a home's value and the existence of trees, up to a certain threshold. 
a more recent study suggests that the existence of a loan also has a positive effect on the value of a home, with a loan a quarter to a third of an acre in size associated with the greatest effect on selling price. In summary, turf grasses are plants that are used extensively as a stable and perennial ground cover. Turf is a positive carbon sink and it offers many benefits not just to the environment but also to urban living. 80 million people in the United States play sports on turf and over 42,000 people in, in Ohio alone are employed by turf. Most importantly, turf gives us a place to enjoy our families and spend some hard-earned recreation time which ultimately improves our quality of life. <laughs>